Greetings fanboys and fangirls, I'm Erod and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. Ever since I became a reviewer, everybody and their mom has asked me what my all-time favorite movie is. To which the answer is very simple. Toy Story. You I know, I know. Why not something older, more stereotypical for a film buff to like? Like Citizen Kane or King Kong? Well, here's the thing. Toy Story was the first movie that I have ever watched that when I walked out of the movie theater, I was completely satisfied. I didn't feel like the movie needed anything more or anything less. It was just right. Every single scene advanced the story forward, except for the ones that did what every great movie should do, show us something that we've never seen before. And no film that I've ever seen since has satisfied me in such a way. I love this movie so much that when the sequel came out, I had no doubt in my mind that it was going to be good. Ironically, by the time the third movie came out, my personal outlook had changed so much that I was actually terrified of the prospect that the third movie was going to be bad. I was so afraid that they were going to besmirch the movie that I loved so much that I actually didn't go to see it right when it came out. A few of my friends, however, convinced me otherwise, and I'm glad that they did, because it was just as great as its predecessors. In just this past year, the Toy Story trilogy officially became the one and only trilogy worthy of being measured alongside by all time favorite movie trilogy, Back to the Future. The Plot Okay, we have a whole lot of Toy Story to get through, so here we go. Toy Story, the original. In a world where toys are secretly alive, we follow the adventures of Andy's toys, who are led by Sheriff Woody, an old-fashioned pull string doll. Reach for the sky! Woody has been Andy's favorite toy since preschool, but all that changes when Andy gets a new toy for his birthday, a Buzz Lightyear action figure. Envious of Buzz, Woody tries to get rid of him, but he ends up causing him and Buzz to get lost. So now these two rivals must put their differences aside as they fight against impossible odds to get back to Andy. Whoa, you idiot! You're a toy! Use your karate chop action! Get away! Hey, hey, how you doing that? Toy Story 2 During a family yard sale, Woody is stolen by Al, a sleazy toy collector. So Buzz assembles a team of toys to go on another impossible mission to rescue his best friend. Toy Story 3 Andy is all grown up and about to leave for college. In the midst of feeling neglected, the toys are accidentally donated to Sunnyside Daycare, which turns out to be a prison for new toys, run by an old teddy bear named Luxo. Once again, Andy's toys must put their skills to the test to escape Sunnyside and ultimately figure out where they belong. Favorite character. Wow, this is by far the most difficult movie series for me to choose a favorite character, because there are so many great ones. The socially awkward Rex, the wisecracking Ham, the loyal and courageous Slinky, and whomever decided to cast Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head deserves an award for absolute outstanding awesomeness. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? Joanne Cusack as Jessie the Yodeling Cowgirl is by far one of the coolest and best developed female characters in the last 10 years, right up there with Buffy and Kim Possible. She is a tough, spunky cowgirl who survived being abandoned and always does her best to defend the defenseless. That critter needs help! <laughs> And of course, you can't talk about Toy Story without talking about Buzz Lightyear. Here's a character that took a life of his own and became an icon overnight, even starring in his own animated series. And on Christmas 1995, every kid on the planet wanted a Buzz Lightyear action figure. Interestingly enough, short-sighted retailers did not account for the movie's popularity and didn't order enough figures to meet the man, a fact that they poke fun of in the second movie. The Buzz Lightyear aisle. Back in 1995, short-sighted retailers did not order enough dolls to meet demand. But that's exactly what Buzz represents, the toy that we all wanted when we were kids but most of us were not lucky enough to get. The ultimate action figure of the ultimate hero, and as far as I'm concerned, playing him is by far the coolest thing Tim Allen has done in his entire career. But if I have to pick a favorite character, it has got to be Woody, played by Tom Hanks. He is a character that I relate to the most. Like me, he's an old soul, and in his case it's quite literal, since he actually is a pull string doll from the 50s. But we share a lot of the same sensibilities, and we both tend to reference things that are often out of date. Look at me! I'm a big toy on campus! Hello! Hey, I'll see you with the Zaka! We are both incredibly critical. 
Ah, 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 please be careful. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. It's not a laser. It's a, it's a little light bulb that blinks. And I think it's fairly obvious that we you both have a short fuse. responsible for delaying my rendezvous with Star Command. You are a toy! Favorite line. With such great comedic actors like Don Rickles and John Ratzenberger on the cast, you get a lot of great one-liners. There was a record player and a yo-yo buzz. I was a yo-yo. Was. Now, let's move. Remind me to glue his helmet shut when we get back. Oh, I seriously doubt he's getting this kind of mileage. But my favorite line is actually a very subtle gesture by old Spudhead. Hey, hey, come on, potato head. If Woody says it's all right, then, well, darn it, it's good enough for me. Yeah, I have to admit, Slink pours it on pretty thick. Favorite scene. Good lord, these movies are nothing but awesome scenes. And as hard as it is for me to pick just one, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut to the chase. Literally. The final chase scene in the first movie is not only my favorite scene out of the whole trilogy, but it is also one of my all-time favorite cinematic chase sequences, right up there with Bullet and Death Proof. I am at the edge of my seat every time I watch it, as Buzz and Woody desperately try to catch up to Andy before he is gone from their lives forever, and believe me, the last length of the race is not an easy one, as the duo run into one obstacle after the other. Rabbit dogs. I can't do it. Take care of Andy for me. No. Traffic, betrayal, low batteries. But even with all these setbacks, Buzz and Woody never give up because they have to get back to the kid that they love. Wait a minute. I just lit a rocket. Rockets explode. Final verdict. The first film was a remarkable achievement in the world of animation, being the first computer animated movie. Not only did this film set the bar really high for future computer animated films, but over 10 years after its release it still holds up against its modern counterparts. I know a lot of people complain about the third movie being way too melodramatic, but personally I find this to be very appropriate. From my perspective, the three movies represent the three stages of childhood. Early childhood, where you see your toys as living friends, mid-childhood when you begin to see your toys as objects for the first time. Of course, this is further accentuated by Al stealing Woody to both display him on a shelf and then sell him to another collector. And last but not least, the end of childhood, where Andy has just outgrown the toys and is ready to move on. Honestly, I can talk about these movies for hours and never do them justice. You just have to check them out for yourself. 10 points on the badassitude meter. Get the family together and give them a watch. To infinity and beyond.